Hello everybody, this is Frank, K4FMH, Fox Mike Hotel, here at the Hamvention 2019. It's a little warm, but the things going on are very, very hot. And yeah, I'm here with a plaque that I just happened to run into, and it says, CW Ops presented to Han Summers D0 UPL in recognition of outstanding achievement in advancing the art of CW, May 2019. But you know what's better than me being here with this plaque? I'm here with Hans. Hans, listen, thank you and welcome to the ICQ Podcast. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be interviewed by you again. Not for the, not for the. First. How many times have we done this? Four times. I don't know. It's really nice. But, but but you know things change, and that's one of the neat things about QRP Labs is you've always got something coming out. Now, let me start from the beginning. I first knew about you because I was interested in Whisper, mm -hmm. and you came out with, in my opinion, what was the first kit that would legitimately do whisper and do all bands and it would do it without a whole lot of spurious nonsense. You had a clock, you knew about GPS and timekeeping and so on. Was that kind of your first major product? The, uh, actually the first product was in 2010 at Dayton. Uh, I did a talk at FDIM in 2010, the four days in May event, the QRP seminar, about uh, QRSS transmitting in QRSS modes and the first kit was a very small QRSS transmitter that I produced 100 of those with my friend G0XAR to sell after that event. And then from there, that developed on to the, what we call the ultimate uh, QRSS transmitter kit, which included Whisper. That involved the ultimate two and then the ultimate three. And then since uh, early 2015, we've been selling the ultimate 3S kit, which we're still selling today, which is the QRSS Whisper trans transmitter kit. Yeah. Very good. And my recognition of the ultimate QRSS kit is that's kind of typical of the lag time between something that's innovative and when people really kind of see it and understand it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've sold thousands of these now. They're very, very popular. And very, and 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 listen, I have one, and it, again, it is the bomb. It's what you want to do if you want to do, particularly whisper. And a lot of people want to do that check propagation and and that kind of thing. All right, so. You've got a lot of other things that you've done, and uh, and I want to let you talk about those. But I want to also include, for the retro fans of APRS, that's a joke. You've got a new tracker because that's the thing is getting a tracker out for a lot of public service events. Yeah. Do you put a four hundred dollar handheld and and something and, and this kind of thing? So I want to make sure we include that, right. Hans, yeah. when we get that. So. After the Whisper product, what, what was kind of the next thing or what's the most recent thing you've released? Yeah, so after the Whisper product, I came with, uh, we basically in increased the range of what you could do with the Whisper transmitter. So I added a relay switch kit, low pass filter kit, receiver kit, a five watt amplifier kit. And so it became a very modular system that you could put together as you wished. And then people, you know, the interesting thing, people started using all of those modules in their own homebrew projects as well as with the whisper transmitter so that was a really nice thing um, then the next really big thing was the QCX CW transceiver kit um, this was introduced for the Yota 2017 summer camp which was hosted by the RSGB in the UK uh, in August 2017 this has gone on to become really the best seller of all of the products I've sold now over 7,300 of those in under two years. If I, if I can interrupt, if I were a cartoonist, yeah. I would have a picture of Hans running down the road with a horde of hams wanting to know, when is the, is, is the QC, when is the next new tweet going to come right, out? Because right. you've been chased in the marketplace over this right. product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been tremendously popular, and, and, and indeed that's why I got the award from the CW Ops Club. Yeah. It certainly is not for my operating proficiency. <laughs> I was laughing with those guys, you know, the only reason I'm here at your banquet dinner is to receive this award because I do not qualify for entrance. You know, they have a 25 words per minute threshold to get in the club. Right. I max out at something like 15 words a minute. I spend all my time designing and building and supporting and I don't get on air as much as I should. So I'm really not a great operator. So they gave me that award in recognition of the QCX design which has encouraged a lot of people to come into CW and try it because it includes so many nice features and the price is so good. Um, well he, here's an analogy. Uh, Steve Jobs uh, and and that guy over at Microsoft they might have not have been the biggest computer users but they really help computers right. use computers right. and in a way that's kind of what you're doing. And I like CW. the analogy. <laughs> And I like to be mentioned in the same <laughs> sentence as those guys. Well, I, and one of them is no longer with us, so I want to keep you from that status for years to come. 
Uh, so, yeah, the light, the light APRS, you wanted to know about yeah. that one. Um, I have some here, uh, we've, we've sold a few. Um, this is a product, it's not my design, this is a product by a friend of mine. So I live in Turkey and a friend of mine, Mustafa TA2MUN, he designed this with his friend uh, whose call I can't quite recall. And uh, we're just distributing that for him and marketing that for him. Yeah. Um, so I have all the facilities and live in the same country as him, so we just help him out with the marketing and distribution. But it has, it's really a full featured uh, APRS tracker. It's also less than half price of the next competitor in the market. So we sell this for $100 now, and that's less than the two major competitors for that. Um, it also is a one watt tra APRS transceiver on VHF. It's frequency agile and it's all open source. Well, one, one thing, a lot of people, and I made the joke about the retro APRS. It is not retro at all. In fact, at Hamvention, uh, I, was, I missed it. I had all my schedule to go yesterday. Bob Bernanga, the developer of APRS, the protocol, uh, was giving a talk about some of the new innovations and the new messaging systems in APRS. So APRS is not dead. It's a community thing. You don't have APRS just by one person having a tracker. You've got to have a networked, RF networked, and internet-based network infrastructure. And we have a lot of disparate development in the United States. But as these things get out there and as the price points get like yours, the best thing uh, going because you can't buy much of a ham device these days for less than a hundred bucks and nobody could argue with the price. Hans, uh, I want to ask you an, uh, something uh, about your business development and, and then make a couple way, of comments. While we're still on that topic, yeah. Bob, daddy of APRS, yeah. I sold him two QCX kits last year. Very good for Bob. Yeah. Hey, I think we've got a new name, Daddy Bob. I think Daddy Bob's got a new handle if he, he were there. Right. Um, talk about your business development. You know, you're developing a kit and then following something else and it getting very popular. You know who that sounds like? No. Martin Jew. Oh, he right. started off with a 1395 I kit. I sold him some QCX kits last year too. Very, very good. Very, very good. And so one of the things that Martin did that it appears that you are doing is you're building your company slowly but at price points that will almost guarantee a market and you got to have a market unlike the angel fund investors where they plan for 10 years out when they got to finish the first year and so it seems to me you're building a great business foundation is that on spot with you yeah absolutely i mean i, I like the organic growth model without taking on uh, investors and a you know huge project like that bit by bit by bit so I'm gradually, you know, I don't like to stand still. I keep trying to develop something new. And uh, the next uh, big thing is the Q QSX transceiver that I'm working on. Um, each time you develop something new, you don't stop selling the old products. You keep selling those. Obviously, the sales tail off, but they never go down to zero. So I like that model. You know, we started with a sim simple QSS kit and then the ultimate kit and all the other accessories. And every time we launch a new kit, you get a big spike in sales, but it comes down, down and down. And keeps at a steady level and it's quite a nice business growth model I'm not an economist or anything you know with all the formal business management training but it seems to make sense to me this model well I have a very good architect friend who was one of the best architects that Yale ever trained in I built a house about seven years ago with my wife and here's something he said he asked me you're not going to get an architect to design your house, are you? <laughs> and, and in a way, sometimes the best management for um, uh, guerrilla business development style, that is outside the box, or people who aren't trained in the box right. themselves. I will tell you that my friend Martin Zhu made a comment to me uh, uh, this. The best investors in a company are the customers buying your product. Listen, I want to thank you for being with us, Hans, and, and let me comment. I really think that you and Farhan in India with the, the, U, the BIDX and UBIDX, you have captured kind of that bleeding edge where it's not a big company with multi-store brick and mortar and all this, but you've captured it at the heart in the traditional spirit of amateur radio. And when you have a decline in those sales since you've made it open source, unforeseen to you, perhaps, someone else comes up with a new tweak and then boom you are back in business with an older product because somebody's added a new spin for it anything else you want our listeners to know about qrp labs and um, and, and me too when's that voice guy coming out on the qcx the qsx you mean q my my part qsx yeah i have the prototype here um i've been uh, showing people the prototype 
There's still a few more months of development on it. It's a really, really ambitious project. Um, I'm aiming to deliver all modes, so CW, sideband, AM, FM, and standalone RITI and PSK31. You can plug in a USB keyboard. It's got an embedded SDR in it with digital, digital signal processing, all the filtering, AGC, speech compression, noise reduction, notch filtering, all the things you expect from DSP. It covers 10 meters to 160 meters. It has a USB sound card emulation, so you can plug it to a PC with a USB cable and you can do uh, all the digital modes, SDR software on the PC. So it's a really full featured radio with very top performance, but I'm trying to deliver it at 10 times, 20 times cheaper than any, anything else with that performance. So the target price is $150 for the whole thing. So it's a really ambitious project and I've still got another few months to iron out all the details. Well, here's a suggestion. On the QSX project, you know, sometimes, like in the SDR world, the open SDR, they would name a product Hermes or whatever. I'd suggest you call it Ambition. <laughs> it's a good, a good, yeah, good one. We'll look, have to pay you a commission on that now. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I, I give that away free. And look, I, I just want you to know, to our team, you are one of the heroes in the marketplace because you're doing it right and you're building it from the ground up and we wish you much success, Hans. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. It's always nice to meet any of your team. Really. Thank you very much. All right, this is Frank K for MH Fox Michael Tell for the ICQ Podcast team.